صلى الله عليك يا رسول الله صلى الله عليك وعلى أهل بيتك المظلومين ما خاب من تمسك بكم وأمن من لجأ إليكم يا ليتنا كنا معكم فنفوز فوزا عظيما قال الله تعالى في كتابه الكريم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم هو الذي أنزل عليك الكتاب منه آيات محكمات منه آيات محكمات هن أم الكتاب وأخر متشابهات فأما الذين في قلوبهم زيغ فيتبعون ما تشابه منه ابتغاء الفتنة وابتغاء تأويله وما يعلم تأويله إلا الله والراسخون في العلم صل على محمد وآل محمد A louder salawat for the love of Fatima al-Zahra alayhi salam When we study the Quran, we see that it has different types of verses. All of the verses in the Quran are not in one category. And if one were to study the science of the Quran, Usul al Quran. If one wanted to study and analyze the categories of the Quran, we would see that the Quran can be categorized in a few different categories. Categories. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes what each category is. Allah says in the Quran that the Quran has some verses that are muhkam and some verses that are mutashabah. Allah says in the Qur'an, هُوَ الَّذِي أَنزَلَ عَلَيْكَ الْكِتَابِ Allah, He is the one who sent down upon you the book, the kitab. فِيهِ هُنَّ أُمْ فِيهِ مِنْهُ آيَاتٌ مُحْكَمَاتٌ From this kitab, some of the verses are muhkam. They are the mother of the book. And there are other verses that are mutashabah. So what's muhkam and what's mutashabah? Muhkam Allah describes as the mother of the book. These are the verses that carry the meaning of the book. These are the foundations of the book. Just like a building, it has some solid foundation and it has a wall that is not, a, is not considered a foundation. The muhkam is a very clear verse. The muhkam is a verse that is direct and it is very clear. For example, Allah says, قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدٌ اللَّهُ الصَّمَدْ لَمْ يَلِدْ وَلَمْ يُولَدْ وَلَمْ يَكُنْ لَهُ كُفْوًا أَحَدٌ These are muhkam. These are very clear. There is nothing like Allah. There is no one like Allah. Allah does not have a son. Allah is not born. This is a very clear verse that does not require much explaining. Or another verse, Allah says, لِلذَّكَرِ مِثْلُ حَظِّ الْأُنْثَيَيْنِ When it comes to inheritance, the male receives what the female, twice what the female receives, double what the female receives. This is a very clear verse. It's very clear and Allah says it in the Qur'an. لَيْسَ كَمِثْلِهِ شَيْءٍ There is nothing like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a muhkam verse. 
And these are the Ummul Kitab, these are the Muhkamat of the Quran. And then the Quran also has Mutashabihat, verses that are not so clear, verses that when you read this verse, you think it, it could mean 10 different meanings. It might have many different meanings. It's not a very clear verse. وَأُخَرُوا mutashabihat, The ones that are vague. The ones that are not so clear. Ones that might have many different meanings. And these are the verses that we cannot independently understand by ourselves. We need someone to explain these verses for us. We need someone who has the knowledge of the Qur'an to come and tell us what these verses mean. So the scholars, they say when you see a verse that's a mutashabah, you bring it on a scale and you put it next to the muhkam. You see, does this in one way or another contradict the muhkam verse? If it does, then that means we cannot accept it, that meaning. We have to accept it in a different meaning. For example, there are verses, there are verses in the Quran that say, Yadu Allahi fawqa aydihim. The hand of Allah is above their hand. Or another verse that says, Wujuhun yawma idhin nadhara ila rabbiha nadhara. On the day of judgment, the faces will look towards their Lord and they will look at their Lord. This is a mutashabah verse. Because when we bring it next to the clear muhkam verse, one that says, Laysa kamithlihi shayt, there's nothing like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah does not have a body. Allahu samad, lam yalid wa lam yulad. We understand from the muhkam verse that Allah does not have a body. Allah does not have a physical appearance. So these verses that are mutashabah, that say something or imply something that Allah has a, a body, we cannot accept them in that way. And we have to accept them, we have to accept them in a different way and take a different understanding from them. And this is why we need an interpreter of the Qur'an. This is why we need someone to interpret the Qur'an and teach us the exact meanings of the Qur'an. Because if we do not have an interpreter of the Qur'an, we will make mistakes even when it comes to the Qur'an. And we see some Muslims today, they come and they say Allah has a body. On the day of judgment, Allah will place his feet in the hellfire. Allah has a body, Allah appears every Thursday night with a physical image and he comes down to earth. This is because whoever says this does not have the real understanding of the Qur'an does not have true understanding of the Qur'an. We need to have true understanding of the Qur'an so that we don't have false tawheed in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because when you give Allah a body, that means your whole structure has fallen. What's the difference with ones who give Allah a body than the Christians who say Allah has a son? Sallallahu ala Muhammad wa ali Muhammad. So this is why it's very important to bring the muhkam verse on a scale and place it next to the mutashabah verse. So if the verse that's not so clear, we are able to understand what this verse truly means. And Allah says in the Quran, فَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ زَيْغٌ فَيَتَّبِعُونَ مَا تَشَابَهَ مِنْ إِبْتِغَاءَ الْفِتْنَةِ وَإِبْتِغَاءَ تَأْوِيلَةِ However, there are groups of people that don't want to reach the true meaning. They don't want to reach what Allah intends when He sends a verse. They want to describe the Qur'an and they want to bring the tafsir and the commentary of the Qur'an according to their own will, according to their own desires. فَأَمَّا الَّذِينَ فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ زَيْغٌ The ones who are sick, they take the mutashabah verse and they change the meaning of that verse. Allah says in the Quran, وَمَا يَعْلَمُ تَأْوِيلَهُ إِلَّا اللَّهِ وَالرَّاسِخُونَ فِي الْعِلْمِ 
Who are the ones who have the true definition of the Qur'an? Who are the ones who have the true commentary of the Qur'an? There's only a few that actually understand the Qur'an, that actually understand the full meaning of the Qur'an. And Allah says who they are. وَمَا يَعْلَمْ تَأْوِيلَهُ إِلَّا اللَّهِ First it's Allah. We all know who Allah is. And second, وَالرَّاسِخُونَ فِي الْعِلْمِ The ones whom Allah has given them knowledge. The ones whom Allah has spoon-fed them knowledge. Who are the رَاسِخُونَ فِي الْعِلْمِ Allah says in another verse, فَاسْأَلُوا أَهْلَ الذِّكْرِ إِن كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ Ask أَهْلَ الذِّكْرِ if you don't know. <coughs> scholars, Sunni scholars, not Shia scholars, in 22 different hadiths, 22 different hadiths say that أَهْلَ الذِّكْرِ are أَهْلَ الْبَيْتِ فَاسْأَلُوا أَهْلَ الذِّكْرِ إِن كُنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ The Ahl al-Dhikr, they are the Ahl al-Bayt. They are the household of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. Who are the rasikhuna fil ilm? They are Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi and his holy household. Sallu ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Who was it that Rasulullah said about him, he is, the, he is the gate of the knowledge of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. It was Amir al-Mu'mineen. When Rasulullah said, Ana madinatul ilm wa aliyun babuha. You want knowledge? You want to seek knowledge? You go through the gate. You go through the means. You take the right way to seek knowledge. And you go through the Ahl al-Bayt, you go through Ali ibn Abi Talib. <coughs> In another narration, Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, he says, نَحْنُ الَّذِينَ عِنْدَنَا عِلْمُ الْقُرْآنِ عِلْمُ الْكِتَابِ وَلَيْسَ عِنْدَ أَحَدٍ مِّنَ النَّاسِ مَا عِنْدَنَا لِأَنَّنَا أَهْلُ سِرِّ اللَّهِ He says, we are the ones who have the knowledge of the Qur'an the knowledge of the kitab, and no one other than us has this knowledge because we are the ones who are holding the secrets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Amir al-Mu'mineen, he says, أَيْنَ الَّذِينَ زَعَمُوا أَنَّهُمُ الرَّاسِخُونَ فِي الْعِلْمِ دُونَنَا Where are the ones who claim that they have the knowledge of the Qur'an other than us? The Ahl al-Bayt, they are the interpreters of the Qur'an. They are parallel to the Qur'an. And Rasulullah says this. Rasulullah, he says, إِنِّي تَارِكُمْ فِيكُمُ الثَّقْلَيْنِ كِتَابَ اللَّهِ وَعِتْرَتِي أَهْلَ بَيْتِي He says, I'm leaving with you two weighty things. Two, you have to put them on a scale. They have to be at the same level on a scale. One is the Kitab Allah, the Book of Allah. And second is my holy household. Then Rasulullah says, لَنْ يَفْتَرِقَ They never separate from one another. <coughs> they never separate from one another until they reach the Hawth al-Kawthar on the Day of Judgment. What does that mean? That means that the Qur'an is parallel to the Ahlul Bayt. And the Ahlul Bayt are parallel to the Qur'an. That means they never separate from one another. They never go against one another. They both explain one another. And they both back one another. And we see that the Qur'an, there are many verses in the Qur'an that prove the wilayah of the Ahl al-Bayt, that prove the imamah of Ali ibn Abi Talib. And Allah. <coughs> the leadership of the Ahl al-Bayt and the imamah after Rasulullah is mentioned numerous times in the Qur'an. But sometimes some people ask, why is the name of the Ahl al-Bayt? And why is the name of Ali ibn Abi Talib? Why is the name of Imam al-Hasan and the Imams not mentioned in the Qur'an? If Allah really wants us to follow them as leaders, Allah should have just mentioned their name in the Qur'an. If Allah mentions their name in the Qur'an, it would be very clear for us. We go and we follow them. Why are their names not mentioned in the Qur'an? And we see this 
This question is asked many times. Sometimes by Shia, they say, why is the name not mentioned in the Quran? And sometimes we see this question asked by the others, the ones who do not accept the leadership of Amir al-Mu'mineen. And they want to say, if his name, if Allah really wanted to choose him, then Allah would have mentioned his name in the Quran. So, what's the answer to this? When someone asks you, why is the name of Amir al-Mu'mineen, why are the names of your Imams not mentioned in the Quran? Of course, the reply to this answer is a few replies. The first is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala out of his wisdom and infinite knowledge did not mention many details in the Quran. There are many details that we practice in our daily life, in our religion that are not mentioned in the Quran. For example, prayer, salah. Salah is amud al-din, it's the pillar of faith. Does the Quran tell us how to pray? Does the Quran tell us how many units of prayer in each prayer we have to pray? Does the Quran mention the rules of the prayer? No. The Quran mentions prayer is wajib. It mentions the times of the prayer. And it does not go into details regarding the prayer. Zakat, same thing. Hajj. Fasting, there are many things that are not mentioned in detail in the Quran. And this is because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has brought down a prophet to explain things in detail. Allah has brought down Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, and it's the job of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Muhammad wa alayhi Muhammad. <coughs> It's the job of Rasulullah to bring the details for us. And our laws, our religion, we take the religion of Islam from two sources. One is the Quran. We take our laws from the Quran. And, and second, it's Rasulullah and his holy household. Rasulullah, he is the one who has the authority of tashri' the authority to teach us the rules and the, the details of religion. And just as important and just as heavy the Qur'an is in taking our rulings from the Qur'an, Rasulullah's orders are the same. We see many people, they say, we tell them, you know, you have to do this, this is wajib, this is haram. They say, no, where is it in the Qur'an? I don't see it in the Qur'an. Not every single detail has to be mentioned in the Qur'an for you to practice. We take many of our details and many of our rulings from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. Don't I believe in Rasulullah? If I say I, have on, I only take from the Qur'an, then that means I'm not believing in Rasulullah. That means my faith in Rasulullah is not strong enough. For someone who says that I only take my rules of religion from the Qur'an, where's the faith in Rasulullah? Where's the obedience towards Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi? So our rules, they come from the Qur'an in one way, and in another way which is just as strong and just as important, it's taking the rules from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. And Rasulullah, he came and he explained the imamah in detail, and he spoke about the leaders after him, and not only Imam Ali, he mentioned the names of the 12 imams after him. He mentioned all of their names. He mentioned details about their life. But there are some people that reject the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa There are some people that go against the sunnah of Rasulullah. They claim to be Muslim. They claim to follow Rasulullah. But you see that they don't accept the sunnah and the tradition of the life of Rasulullah. And inshallah, I will come to it at the end of the speech. How there were some Muslims that we're against the sunnah of Rasulullah from the beginning of Islam. So this is the first. It's out of the wisdom and the knowledge of Allah, where Allah chose not to mention many details in the Quran. Second, what's the second reason the names of the imams, the name of Imam Ali is not mentioned in the Quran? The answer is, who said the names of Imam Ali are not meant? Who said the names of the Imams are not mentioned in the Quran? Who said the Imamah is not mentioned in the Quran? 
the Imams are mentioned in the Quran. There are many verses that describe the leadership of Amir al Mu'mineen, that describe the Ahlul Bayt in the Quran. Or else, how do we accept them as Imams? We also have verses that back them as Imams. Allah says in the Quran, Innama waliyukum Allah wa rasuluhu walladhina amanu alladhina yuqimun as salata wa yu'tun as zakata wa hum raki'un. Your wali? Your leader is Allah and his prophet and the mu'min, the mu'mineen, the believers. Who out of these believers? The one who gives zakat while performing salat. Go and look at the narrations. Go and look at the tafasir, the commentary of the Quran of this verse. Who is the one who gave his ring while he was praying? It was Ali ibn Abi Talib. It was Imam Ali alayhi salam. He was the only one in history who gave zakat while performing salat. And Allah says, your wali, your leader is Allah, the prophet, and the one who gives charity while performing prayer. The, the narrations, Sunni and Shia say that this was Ali ibn Abi Talib. He was the one who gave zakat while performing salat. Another verse, Allah says in the Quran, فَمَنْ حَاجَّكَ فِيهِ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا جَاءَكَ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ فَقُلْ تَعَالَوْ نَدْعُ أَبْنَاءَنَا وَأَبْنَاءَكُمْ وَنِسَاءَنَا وَنِسَاءَكُمْ وَأَنفُسَنَا وَأَنفُسَكُمْ ثُمَّ نَبْتَهِلْ فَنَجْعَلْ لَعْنَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَى الْكَاذِبِينَ The story of Mubahala, the verse of Mubahala, where the Christians of Najran, they came, they told Rasulullah, we don't believe in you. And we believe that Jesus is the Son of God. <coughs> Rasulullah kept describing to them, kept telling, to them, telling them, if Jesus is the Son of God, then Adam is more worthy of being the Son of God because Adam does not have a father nor a mother. So they kept insisting. Then Allah told Rasulullah, then let's do mubahala, where we ask Allah to curse whoever is wrong. فَمَنْ حَاجَّكَ فِيهِ مِنْ بَعْدِ مَا جَاءَكَ مِنَ الْعِلْمِ Whoever keeps insisting and keeps wanting to argue with you after you give him ilm, after you give him knowledge, then tell them, فَقُلْ تَعَالَوْ نَدْعُ أَبْنَاءَنَا We will call our sons and you call your sons. We will call our women, you call your women. You, we, call, we bring ourselves and you bring yourselves. And the curse of Allah will be upon the lion. Who did Rasulullah bring with him? For Abna'ana, all of the Muslims, they say that he brought Imam al Hassan and Imam al Hussein with him. For Nisa'ana, the wives of Rasulullah, for Nisa'ana, the women in the, wife, in the life of Rasulullah, who did Rasulullah bring? Rasulullah only brought one lady, and that was Fatima al Zahra. Even though there were many women in the life of Rasulullah. We all know that Rasulullah had multiple wives. There were women in the house of Rasulullah. There were many of them. But Rasulullah chooses to bring one. And that was Fatima al-Zahra as the Nisa, as the woman in the life of Rasulullah. وَأَنفُسَنَا وَأَنفُسَكُمْ He brings Ali ibn Abi Talib. So the Ahlul Bayt are mentioned in the Quran. Yes, maybe not by direct name, but they are mentioned in the Quran. And there are other verses that mention the Ahlul Bayt. Another verse Allah says in the Quran, Surah At Tawbah, verse 19. أَجَعَلْتُمْ سِقَايَةَ الْحَاجِ وَعِمَارَةَ الْمَسْجِدِ الْحَرَامِ كَمَنْ آمَنَ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخَرِ وَجَاهَدَ فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ the people of Mecca, the tribes of Me in Mecca, they were saying, who's better? We, one says, we give the hujjaj, we give the pilgrims water. Another was saying, no, we are the custodians of the house of Allah. We are the custodians of the Kaaba. We are better. And they kept arguing with one another. This one says, this group says, we are better than you because we give water. Another says, we are better because we have the keys to the Kaaba. Then Allah comes and tells, tells them, أَجَعَلْتُمْ سِقَايَةَ الْحَاجِ 
وعمارة المسجد الحرام كمن آمن بالله واليوم الآخر You are comparing the ones who give water to the hujjaj and ones who have the, the keys to Masjid al-Haram like the one who believed in Allah from the first day? No. Then Allah says the one who believed from the first day, this is the true believer and this is the one who is better. And who is the first one who believed in Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Who was the first Muslim? Who was the first one who defended Rasulullah? Who was the first one who was with Rasulullah from day one? It was Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi wa sallam. There are many verses in the Quran that mention and describe the Ahl al-Bayt. Another verse Allah says in the Quran, chapter 13, verse 43. And of course, I can keep going on mentioning verses in the Quran that describe the Ahl al-Bayt. Another one Allah says in the Quran, وَيَقُولُ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا لَسْتَ مُرْسَلًا the kuffar, they, will, they tell you, O oh Rasulullah, that you are not mursal, you are not a prophet, you are not a messenger. وَيَقُولُ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا لَسْتَ مرسلا. Tell them, قُلْ قُلْ كَفَى بِاللَّهِ شَهِيدًا بَيْنِي وَبَيْنَكُمْ وَمَنْ عِنْدَهُ عِلْمُ الْكِتَابِ Tell them that I am satisfied with the witness that I have for me. I have two witnesses that witness for me that I am Rasulullah. One is Allah. قُلْ كَفَى بِاللَّهِ شَهِيدًا بَيْنِي وَبَيْنَكُمْ Allah witnesses. If the whole world does not want to witness for Rasulullah as the messenger of Allah, and Allah is witnessing, who, who's better as a witness? Allah. قُلْ كَفَى بِاللَّهِ شَهِيدًا بَيْنِي وَبَيْنَكُمْ And one more witness. وَمَنْ عِنْدَهُ عِلْمُ الْكِتَابِ one who has the knowledge of the kitab. One who has the knowledge of the Qur'an. Who is that one? That is Ali ibn Abi Talib alayhi salam. He is the one who has the knowledge of the Qur'an. He is the one who is the gate of the, towards the city of knowledge. And that is Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. Ana madinatul ilm wa aliyun ba'dwa. So the Ahl al-Bayt are mentioned Numerous times in the Quran, sometimes through tafsir and another times through ta'wil. And the Quran has tafsir and ta'wil. Tafsir is the apparent meaning of a verse. Ta'wil is the deeper meaning. It's the inner meaning. And ta'wil is what we take from the rasukhoon of al-ilm. Ta'wil is what we take from Ahl al-Dhikr. Ta'wil is what we take from the Ahl al-Bayt, the ones who have the knowledge of the Quran. And they tell us that the Ahl al-Bayt, they are the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They are the miracles of Allah. They are kalimatullah. Al-Hakim al Nishaburi, a Sunni scholar, he says the tafsir of this verse, فَتَلَقَّى آدَمُ مِنْ رَبِّهِ كَلِمَاتٍ فَتَابَ عَلَيْهِ إِنَّهُ هُوَ التَّوَّابُ الرَّحِيمُ Adam, after he ate from the tree, Adam, he needed something for Allah to forgive him. Adam kept doing istighfar, he kept crying. He kept crying to ask Allah for forgiveness. But Allah did not immediately forgive him. Then Adam, he did one thing where Allah forgave him. And Allah says in the Quran, فَتَلَقَّى آدَمُ مِنْ رَبِّهِ كَلِمَاتِ فَتَابَ عَلَيْهِ there was an exchange of words. Adam, he said something to Allah, then Allah forgave him. فَتَابَ عَلَيْهِ إِنَّهُ هُوَ التَّوَّابُ الرَّحِيمُ So Al-Hakim in Nishaburi, he says, Adam raised his hands to the sky, to Allah, and he said, Allahumma اغفر لي بحق محمد. Oh Allah, for Allah. Oh Allah, forgive me by the right of Muhammad. So then, that time, Rasulullah was not born yet. Adam, he's the father of Rasulullah. The narration says that Allah asked Adam, 
Ya Adam, who is Muhammad? How do you know who Muhammad is? The narration says that Adam, he told Allah, Oh Allah, I saw on the arsh, I saw on your throne, La ilaha illallah Muhammadun Rasulullah. So I saw... He said, I saw a name that is right next to the name of Allah. I knew that this name is a very holy name. This is someone that I can ask Allah by the love of this person and Allah will forgive me by the love of this person. So Allah forgave him. But the verse says, فَتَلَقَّى آدَمُ مِنْ رَبِّهِ كَلِمَاتٍ there were words, and Muhammad is one word. There were words that Adam used to ask Allah for, to forgive him. This is why Ibn Hajar, another Sunni scholar, he says Adam raised his head and he told and he saw on the throne, Alu Muhammadin Khayrul Bariyah. The household of Rasulullah, they are the best bariyah. They are the best. Creations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sallu ala Muhammad wa alimah. So if we want to mention the verses describing the Ahlul Bayt and mentioning the Ahlul Bayt, there are many verses in the Quran that describe the Ahlul Bayt and talk about the Ahlul Bayt. And our scholars have counted hundreds of verses that speak about the Ahlul Bayt, that speak about Ali ibn Abi Talib, that speak about Fatima al-Zahra alayhi salam Ayatullah Sayyid Sadiq al-Shirazi, Ayatullah al-Uzma Sayyid Sadiq al-Shirazi, he has a book by the name of Fatima fi quran Fatima in the Quran. And he mentions that Fatima al-Zahra has been mentioned in the Quran 270 times in between tafsir and ta'wil in 68 different surahs in the Quran. 270 times Fatima al-Zahra has been mentioned in the Quran. This is only Fatima. Amir al-Mu'mineen has been mentioned way more than that. So the Ahl al-Bayt, they are mentioned in the Quran. Maybe not exactly by name, their name is not mentioned in the Quran, but they are mentioned in the Quran. The third reason the Ahlul Bayt are not mentioned in the Quran by name is for us to use our intellect. For us to use our mind and our intellect that Allah has given us. Because when it comes to aqidah, when it comes to ideology, when it comes to belief, we, are, we cannot do taqlid. We cannot follow. We cannot do taqlid and imitate when it comes to aqidah, when it comes to our belief system, we have to believe out of faith. We have to reach the conclusion, we have to study and reach a conclusion that in what we believe in. For example, the day of judgment. I cannot believe in the day of judgment because I see my parents or I see someone tell telling me you have to believe in the day of judgment. I have to believe in the day of judgment out of faith. I have to believe in Allah out of faith in Allah. I have to believe in Rasulullah out of faith in Rasulullah. And same when it comes to the imamah. <coughs> when it comes to the successor after Rasulullah, we have to have faith. This is one of our usul al-deen. The imamah, we have to have faith in the imamah. So I need to believe and I need to study and I need to analyze for me to believe. And this is what the Quran is about. And this is what the religion of Islam is about. Allah says in the Quran, you first open the Quran, you want to read the Quran, Surah Al-Baqarah. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Alif, Lam, Meem. ذَلِكَ الْكِتَابُ لَا رَيْبَ فِيهِ هُدًا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبِ This book is for a few. This book is for the ones, the muttaqeen, the ones who believe in Allah, the first requirement for faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِالْغَيْبِ And then after, وَيُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةَ وَمِمَّا رَزَقْنَاهُمْ يُنْفِقُونَ But the first condition of faith in Allah is believing in the unseen, believing in what we do not see. And this is what faith is. When you're ready to believe in something out of faith, maybe you do not see it clearly, but your heart sees it. Maybe the eyes do not see it. 
But the heart definitely sees it. And this is what faith is. It's something that's seen by the heart and seen by the intellect, but maybe the eyes do not see. And Allah tells us, I gave you this Qur'an, you have to think. You have to ponder about this Qur'an. أَفَلَا يَتَدَبَّرُونَ الْقُرْآنَ أَمْ عَلَىٰ قُلُوبٍ أَقْفَالُهَا Do they not ponder about the Qur'an or are their hearts locked? The fourth reason the names of the Ahlul Bayt are not mentioned in the Qur'an is to protect the Qur'an from tahrif. Allah wants to protect the Qur'an. He did not mention the names of the Ahlul Bayt. And today all of the Muslims agree that the sunnah of Rasulullah has been fabricated. The sunnah of Rasulullah has been played with by some Muslims. This is something that all the Muslims agree about. And Rasulullah, he himself, he said, There are many that are going to lie and bring narrations in my name. So if the sunnah of Rasulullah has been played with, the Quran also can be played with. But Allah wanted to protect the Qur'an. And Allah wanted the Qur'an to be kept and not touched by anyone. So He did a few things out of His wisdom so that the Qur'an is protected. And we know that the sunnah has been played with. The sunnah has been played with. Abu Hurairah, he himself, he says that the second Khalifa, Umar, used to beat me with a stick and he tells me, you are lying. You are lying with these, with these narrations that you bring. And he said, if he did not beat me, and if he did not stop me from bringing narrations, I would have given you double what I brought. So he himself, he's saying that the second Khalifa is beating him because he, and, and telling him, you are lying when you bring uh, narrations on behalf of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa And of course, Abu Huraira, this figure that Bukhari, he relies on him more than Abu Bakr, Umar. Uthman and Imam Ali put together. You take all of their narrations, you put them together, you see that Bukhari relies on Abu Huraira more than he relies on these four. And they were Muslims Longer than he was, because Abu Huraira was only with Rasulullah for three years. But he narrates more narrations than these, than more narrations than Amir al Mu'mineen, more narrations than the others. And he says, If Umar did not beat me, I would have brought double what I have. Now you imagine what kind of person this is. The narrations of Rasulullah were played with. And there were some of the Muslims that were against the sunnah of Rasulullah from day one. And there is a very known incident in history by the name of Raziyat al-Khamis, the calamity of the Thursday. And this is what Ibn Abbas, he says, the calamity of Islam and the calamity that befell upon the Muslims was because of that Thursday, Raziyat al-Khamis where Rasulullah was on his deathbed. A few days before Rasulullah passes away, he tells the Muslims, some of them that were not even supposed to be there, he tells them, bring me something, bring a pen and a paper for me to tell you something that you will never go astray. Go and read what some of the Muslims said about Rasulullah. Some narrations mention his name, and other narrations, they say someone. The ones that mention his name, they say Umar, he said about Rasulullah, Allah. The man is hallucinating. The book of Allah is enough. So who was the one that attacked the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi? Who was the one that said the book of Allah is enough for us? We don't need the sunnah of Rasulullah. There were some Muslims that were against the sunnah from day one. Now some people they say, okay, why didn't Rasulullah mention what he was going to mention anyways? Even because the narration says that Rasulullah, he tells them, لا ينبغي الاختلاف عند نبي And he tells them, leave me. 
after the man said that about him. Why didn't Rasulullah mention what he was going to mention? The answer is clear. They are saying the man is hallucinating. The man has gone crazy about Rasulullah. Astaghfirullah. So if they are saying he's hallucinating while he's next to them, what are they going to see, say when he's away from them? What are they going to say when he's dead? Of course they're not going to accept what he says. Narrations say that some of the Muslims were against the sunnah of Rasulullah from day one. Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As, he says, I used to write, and this is what Tabari mentioned. He says, Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As used to write the sunnah of Rasulullah. Anything that Rasulullah da does or says, he used to write it down. So he says, some of the Muslims, they came to me and they told me, why are you writing everything? Rasulullah has emotions. Rasulullah gets angry. Rasulullah gets mad. Rasulullah gets happy. Don't write everything. So he says, I went to Rasulullah and I told him that some of the Muslims are telling me, don't write the sunnah of Rasulullah. He said, Rasulullah told me, Uktub, write. Write down everything that I do, every single movement that I have, write it down. Because Allah says in the Quran, وَمَا أَتَاكُمُ الرَّسُولِ فَخُذُوهُ وَمَا نَهَاكُمْ عَنْهُ فَانْتَهُ he says, everything that comes out of my mouth is haq. وَمَا يَنطِقُ عَنِ الْهَوَى إِنْ هُوَ إِلَّا وَحْيٌ يُوحَى Anything that Rasulullah says, this is the revelation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the fifth and final reason that the names of the Ahlul Bayt were not mentioned in the Qur'an was that because there were individuals in history that had so much hatred for the Ahlul Bayt, especially Ali ibn Abi Talib. If their names were mentioned in the Quran, they would have left the religion of Islam at that time, and they would have caused a disaster at that time because of their hatred for the Ahlul Bayt and their hatred for Imam Ali alayhi salam. And they would have changed. Well, anything, anything that happened, that Allah mentions, it would have been changed. Just like the, ver the hadith of Al-Ghadir, where Rasulullah tells the Muslims, Man kuntu mawlah, fahada aliyun mawlah. Whoever I'm his mawla, then Ali is his mawla. Whoever I'm his leader, then Ali is his leader. They came and they say right now, yes, Rasulullah, he stopped 100,000, over 100,000 100, people to tell them Ali is my friend. This is very clear. The narrations have been changed and the meanings have been changed. And the same would have happened with the Quran. And we see that the hatred that some had for the household of Rasulullah grew worse and worse after the martyrdom of Rasulullah <laughs> sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. They began to betray Rasulullah and break the orders of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. Instead of respecting, instead of honoring the family of Rasulullah, they turned their backs against the family of Rasulullah. Fatima, the daughter of Rasulullah, the only daughter at that time, they turned their back on her. And they took away her inheritance from her. They took away the imamah, the leadership. The official leadership, they took it away from Ali ibn Abi Talib. And they attacked the house of Fatima al-Zahra. And this was exactly what Rasulullah was worried about in his final days. In his final days, narrations say that Rasulullah would look at the faces of his household and he would begin to cry. He looks at the face of Ali ibn Abi Talib, he cries at the face of Fatima, and he cries. He tells the Muslims, O oh Muslims, I'm leaving behind my household. I ask you to love my household. قُلْ لَا أَسْأَلُكُمْ عَلَيْهِ أَجْرًا إِلَّا الْمَوَدَّةَ فِي الْقُرْبَةَ I just want the mawaddah, I just want the love for my holy household. 
المرء يكرم في أهل بيته. He keeps telling them, show love to my أهل البيت. He keeps crying when he remembers what happens to the أهل البيت. He tells the Muslims, he tells some of the close Shi'as about what will happen to Fatima alayha salam. He says, كأني بها وقد دخل الذل بيتها وانتهكت حرمتها وغصب حقها ومنعت إرثها وأسقط جنينها وهي تنادي يا محمد فلا تجاب وتستغيث فلا تغاف فلا تزال بعدي محزونة مكروبة باكية فاطمة الزهراء spent her days those numbered days that she had after Rasulullah, she spent them crying over Rasulullah. She had lost a father like Rasulullah. All she wanted to do was cry for Rasulullah. But some of the Muslims, they did not even want to hear the crying of Fatima. They told Ali ibn Abi Talib, Oh Ali, tell Fatima to either cry during the day or at night. We cannot sleep because of her crying. So Fatima to Zahra, she would go outside under a tree, take the hands of her children during the day and cry for Rasulullah. They came and they took out, they cut off that tree. They did not want to see Fatima crying. So Rasulullah, he built a house, he built a small hut, and she named it Bayt al Ahzan, the house of sorrows. This is where she would go and cry. Sometimes she would go to the grave of Rasulullah. And she would take the soil from the grave of Rasulullah. She would smell the soil from the grave and begin to cry. Ahawat ila qabr al-Nabi Muhammadin Sha'awqan tashum turaba وتقول والهة بقلب مكمد ماذا على من شمت أربة أحمد ألا يشم مدى الزمان She would cry over the grave of Rasulullah, but even that crying they did not like. They came and they took off that tree, they, they cut off that tree that she would cry next to. She would cry next to the grave of Rasulullah. Ya 
الا بالله العلي العظيم انا لله وانا اليه راجعون let us raise our hands in dua by the love of fatima and the position of fatima نسألك اللهم وندعوك باسمك العظيم الأعظم الأعز الأجل الأكرم يا الله يا الله يا رحمن يا رحيم يا مقلب القلوب ثبت قلوبنا على دينك اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات تابع اللهم بيننا وبينهم بالخيرات إنك مجيب الدعوات إنك غافر الخطيئات إنك ماحي السيئات إنك على كل شيء قدير وصلى الله على محمد وآل محمد